what are the top five challenges in WMS implementation? There are literally hundreds and thousands of different WMSs on the market, almost like shoes, yeah. How he has implemented warehouse automation in thousands of companies. So what is your advice to the team leaders? Uh, Defining the right compensation scheme. Right, right. right. Second thing is the penalties. Yeah. This video is brought to you by us, SCM Dujo. We provide awesome courses, guides, best practices for supply chain community. Hi folks, welcome to one more episode of the Supply Chain Show. As you know, in our program, we bring in interesting topics, uh, innovative subjects, and a people who is driving innovation in supply chain. One of the people I recently met is Serge in the conference in Dubai, where he, met, he basically shared how he has implemented warehouse automation in thousands of companies and i was actually surprised i mean how you can do warehouse automation in thousands of companies where he shared his experience and what they're doing in the company he leads named cleverance so you can google cleverance and you figure out what these guys do so pretty pretty, pretty clever stuff but the topic of today's episode is what are the top five challenges in wms implementation or you can also say what are top five challenges in warehouse automation in general, right? Sergey, welcome to the show. Yeah. Hi, Mudassi. How are you <laughs> Thank doing? Thank you. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Good, good, good. So just very briefly, tell us about your software and then we'll jump into the challenges. Okay, Cleverance is just a software provider for, you can say it's inventory management software. So cool. we're a vendor, we work through Partner Channel who does implementation so for software all over the world and all of the warehouses so we really know big and small warehouses big and small challenges and how it all plays out throughout the like first month of usage and then first year and all till the end of the company, of the company. <laughs> who maybe closes their house and starts something else excellent so what is it what is the first challenge you would like to mention okay from my opinion first and big the biggest yeah. uh, so-called challenge is trying to find the right WMS okay. as if there is some right WMS as a right pair of shoes you see you <laughs> just have to choose it and then everything will be okay will be fine. yeah the problem is that, that that's not the case uh, also there are literally hundreds and thousands of different WMSs on the market almost like shoes yeah yeah they, they all like they all sneakers so uh, the state of affairs now is that yeah you have to hire some tailor who will customize tailor it. customize yeah. these WMS solution for you. Yeah. So all they're almost the same. All of WMS is the same. So the problem is actually with standards. Right. So yes, maybe a marine container is standard, but yeah. there is nothing standard about yeah. your warehouse. Correct. And so standardization is the problem, right? Yeah. Standards, it's all with standards, yeah. So yeah. companies want to automate, but at the same time save money, maybe cut some edges, do something quicker, or maybe cheaper, or maybe more expensive, bigger, smaller. And uh, it all adds up to uh, problems that only competent partner, the implementation provider or some company who does WMS implementation will really solve. So... Uh, I'm not saying that you have to just close your eyes and pick whatever WMS there is. Yeah? yeah. It's not like that. Yeah. But picking the right WMS wouldn't help. Okay. The, what you have to do is yeah. find the right competent partner right. who can implement this WMS. Uh, well, and it could be any WMS. Yes, yeah, sure. For that matter. So uh, Cleverance have like 800 different partners who does implementations. Yeah. So they are, all have their weaknesses and strongs. Somebody does small projects, somebody does bigger projects, and there may be truck and trace involved or 3PL, something. Right. So each partner knows their own business. Right. They can't do any warehouse. So instead of finding the right WMS, you should spend time, more time trying to right find the right partner who do the implementation. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. That's a great point. But so what would be the second challenge you meant? Okay, second challenge is finding the right balance between stiff rules and yeah. flexible flexible rules well, what do you mean by business that? processes. I mean that you're buying software, you want you're spending money on WMS. So right. you think, oh, let it do everything. So right. everything has to be in that software. So it's some smart solution, it should do smart things, but you know, again, 
we are now in 2022, most software is like robot, robot, they will do only some rigid steps yeah. and that rigidness might hurt the company. So for instance, you came up with the brilliant idea that Pika cannot take more than there is in this cell right. according to the WMS. Okay. The guy came to yeah. the bin and he sees there's two things, but only one according to WMS. Right. What should he do? Pick two. Pick two. <laughs> That's better. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. But if you said, no, you cannot pick two yeah. and there's no other bin with the same product, yeah. then everything stops. Yeah. He goes to supervisor, yeah. supervisor calls WMS provider, what to do, yeah. nothing to do because the changing software is really difficult. Right. Yeah. So rigid rules, yeah. they hurt business sometimes. So yeah. you have to find uh, really right, right balance between right. where you want rigidness, rigidness and, and where you want some flexible things that, that doesn't really uh, affect Right. the quality of service and, and, and clearance can segregate between the two right so for example, yeah right each, which is very very uh, let's call it customized to your the specific business yes right yeah. because every so, business have their own rigid and flexible rules one sure, size sure yeah doesn't fit so, and there are like two levels you can configure configure is simple you can do it on the spot then which customize. is off the shelf basically it's off the shelf you just uh, yeah it's some uh, Check, one, check boxes, you just set check boxes. Yeah, receiving, shipping, inbound, yeah. warehouse location, all check that. Check yeah. for quantity or doesn't yeah. check for quantity. Do you need to, to enter, specify the expiry dates for each and every product? Is it uh, obligatory or it's compulsory? Yeah. So that, that's a, it, it's not a customization, it's just configuration. It can be done quickly, yeah? Right. And then there's customization that needs some developers. Right. Uh, competing IT guys, right. and if you want to quickly collect and ship uh, something and right. you're stuck with customization, right. this will take really a day or two to solve. Yeah. So don't go for too rigid rules for warehouse. Two good questions on this. First, how, uh, uh, for example, if I'm a 3 PL owner or, or any warehouse you know, logistics manager, how can I identify my flexible and rigid rules? Secondly, given the example you have said, where you identify the both and then pick whatever's off the shelf and then the remaining, which is unique to your business, you can, with cleverance, we can do some coding on the top. But wouldn't it cost more if you do that? So, sure. So, yeah. It will cost you time at least. <laughs> time at least. Time and decision. Right. Making decisions. Right. A new, some new area for you is tough. Yeah. So, but uh, actually making this decision about rigid and flexible is very easy. So, first of all, think, Will that affect your service? So our customers are paying for service. Will it affect the service? If it wouldn't affect the service, then why bother? Okay, it's software. You could put a lot of rules in that, but you don't have to. If it doesn't affect service, if it doesn't make things easier or cheaper, just don't do that. Right. Later, you will find out, will it do best for your business or you can keep it as it is? And okay, how can we identify flexible and rigid rules quickly? Yeah, so again, all rules are rigid in software. Right. There yeah. are no flexibility. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's like this. Yeah. So input, output, whenever you zero. think, yeah. let put new rule, yeah. you should think, will it increase service? Will okay. it right. give right. service to the customer? Excellent, yeah. excellent. So that's the implementation partner. Second is the identification of the rules and then, and then maybe customize where you need some flexibility. Otherwise, if you don't need it, I would always recommend use of the shelf because they're pro is better. Okay, so what is the third one? So third one is trading speed for accuracy. So sometimes it's very tempting to skip some scans, skip some steps just to speed up things. Yeah. Yeah. And you just have to know that all the time saved on skipping. Yeah steps yeah. will be spent later trying yeah. to fixing mistakes yeah. yeah so things like oh we don't want to place right barcode right. on these new incoming goods or oh we, we just don't want to scan these boxes we, we will pick them by hand and won't check for the is it right or not later it will build up to lots of mistakes and all of the time saved will be spent on trying to fix the mistakes so 
think twice when you trade speed for accuracy. So, I've managed warehouses, managed a lot of people in their, you know, in our warehouse as well. The 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 discipline, it's it's all down to discipline, right? Yes. So, what is your advice to the team leaders or the logistics managers to let's call it uh, drive the behavior in the pickers? You know, guys. Uh, do not skip because yeah. as everything explained for the, all the good reasons. So, just one advice from the let's call it a culture and people perspective, how we can coach people not to skip. Okay, so uh, there, the people on the floor they always think only on how many, how much do they earn yes. doing things. Yes, yeah? yes. So th th this is two step thing. First of all, uh, defining the right compensation scheme. Right. 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 Yeah. So that that will reflect the complexity of the job they are doing. Right. For instance, keep taking the whole pallet should be different from taking a whole uh, bin of different products that you have to gather scattered all over the warehouse. Yeah, That should differentiate the compensation for the employee. Right. That's the first thing. Yeah. Second thing is the penalties. Yeah. So you should penalize the same day like the same hour for the, thing, the things that are done wrong. Right. I'm not telling about right. uh, these forklifts that maybe give the bad U-turn and drop the pallet. Okay, <laughs> that happens in every warehouse. That's maybe not a mistake, but uh, bad behavior, right. maybe throwing away the, a big list that is too complicated. I don't want, I, I should go and take another. I'll, which I'll take a break. Easy. Yeah, do, uh, do take a smoke, break. Yeah. yeah. Do some, no, just throw away the pick yeah, list yeah. and go so get another one. Easy one, yeah. One, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, those things should be penalized. Penalized, yeah. yeah. So uh, get, uh, it, uh, get it and stick approach, and, basically. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, sometimes customer thinks that software will do that. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, see, yeah. like, oh, and they, they ask something like this. Oh, what if he doesn't scan it? What if he just skips? You know, he can grab this. And just go out without scanning. Work. Without scanning, he just go out to the street. With yes. This, uh, yeah, with this product. Yeah. So how you deal with that? If you can deal with that, you can deal with all the other things. Yes, excellent. Okay, that leads to our fourth challenge, which you have mentioned. Yeah, fourth challenge is to differentiate what the barcode means di between right. different barcodes. So uh, people think that barcodes are is some unique things, maybe like a license plate or an yeah. ID. Yeah. So they are all unique. Uh, no, again, it's not the case. Barcodes is uh, similar to a name. Everybody is Ahmed yeah, or John, yeah. and even a surname, <laughs> and don't tell you the difference. Yeah. So it always happens that uh, the barcode on the product is the same as on the bin, the same as on the document, same as on the maybe your badge. So all barcodes are same, and you have to first differentiate between your own barcodes because it's tempting to print these two digit barcodes maybe on the bins not a good idea so put some prefixes for everything for pallets for bins for badges unique prefix in the barcode this maybe 13 digits put something up front as a prefix to differentiate because differentiation will help you later when you are uh, vendors will ship you products with all of the same barcodes. And uh, why is that? Why are barcodes not the same, uh, all the same? Is instead of uh, um, not like uh, license plates were unique. Yeah. So uh, the government issued IDs are unique. And but although there are legislations and some uh, institutions that issue these barcodes, the uh, companies and the customers, they don't have to make the, their barcodes unique. So institutions try to, to do the right thing to make all the barcodes unique, but uh, partners Customers uh, and uh, companies, they don't want to pay extra. Yeah. So they can uh, recycle 10 barcodes for all of, the, all of their inventory. So like in January, it's tomato. Three months later, it's uh, something else, milk. Yeah. yeah. You have to track those things as a 3PL, as a warehouse manager. So at least 
try to get your thing right. Yeah. Add prefixes for your own barcodes. That's your issue. Then it would be much easier to deal with all this hassle that yeah. brings you by yeah. is brought to you by supplies. Cool, cool, great, great explanation. The last one. What mm. will say? What will be the biggest of the the, 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 the the latest? Yeah, it's maybe one of the biggest. It's just latest on my list. Right. Is a good, really good Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Right. Yes. We have, uh, a, we have a problem in a lot of countries these days still. True. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's different from an office. Because right. in office, you're just sitting. Yeah, we are also big, right? Same I mean, place. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You can have a huge office. Yeah. And you think, oh, office, I have Wi-Fi in the office. It's right. same in the warehouse. What's the point? Yeah. What, what's the problem? Uh, Everything is, is okay. Sick, uh, most the of problem the is, yeah. are in like remote, no free zones here, even to get a good Yeah, weapon. yeah, yeah. But, but, but in office, you're mostly sitting right. on your desk. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. You're, you're sitting in, in a place. On warehouse, people always crossing Cross. these boundaries between Wi-Fi points. So even in the Western countries or established so country, you have this problem, even right? Even in well-established country, this is a problem. Even if in a warehouse which is just one story below the office, you will have problem of roaming between yeah. the access points. So what is the solution? I I remember you saying Cleverance can work without Wi-Fi, and as soon as you connect to the Wi-Fi, it will update the data, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, tell us more. Solu the solution that Cleverance provides yeah. is yeah. just for software to be able to work without Wi-Fi. Right. So in most WMSs, the, there is no real software on this mobile device. It's right. either some browser or maybe remote connection. So it will lost as, uh, Im immediately. As soon as you lost Wi-Fi connection, there is no software on your device. Right. And then you have to reconnect and maybe oh, you yeah. lost all of your data. Uh, software makes software for, uh, Cleverance makes software for device. device. So the software on device can work offline. Right. So these two, three seconds uh, of roaming between one access point to another, or maybe it's a whole hour working in a desert with no Wi-Fi, it will not affect the uh, job. Yeah, so because the, the data will be stored. Data is stored. Yeah, but, but the only probably thing which data. will not happen is the updation of the numbers, right? So. The inventory yeah, and the picnic, yeah. that will only happen when you have reconnected yeah, to the Wi-Fi. Some data updates only once a week. Yeah, some yeah. Day, once data a day. Once a day, yeah. Maybe, okay, stocks in a bin will update uh, every minute, yeah, in a huge warehouse. Mm -hmm. But you can put access points mm -hmm. on those with the most uh, recent updates, mm -hmm. but then you can work, you can do some acceptance in the desert right. where there's no Wi-Fi because you have all the data there. Right, right, right. Only device. So this leads to my last point. So the way you describe Cleverance is on the device, right? It's uh, It needs Wi-Fi, but not do not need Wi-Fi on the system. So it's not essentially a SaaS software. Right, which is great, but it can be integrated to any ERP or any system. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be. I think it's. It's actually that's the point. Yeah. it have to be integrated to some system. Some system. It could be another WMS system itself. Yes, possibly. Right. Yeah. So therefore, you don't call yourself WMS. You call yourself warehouse automation. Right. That's good because I have seen warehouse automation. I mean, WMS system because I work with a lot of 3PL. Okay, they have the uh, yeah WMS system, but they don't have the barcoding system mm -hmm. or the pick pack. So yeah. you can connect yeah. with that. Yeah. But another issue which I've seen with the 3PLs are, for example, uh, you know, they have their WMS and they have to integrate with, because a, a classical 3PL, they work with, you know, a lot of customers, right? And, and integrating with a lot of customers, uh, the ERP system is a challenge, right? Yeah. But the way you describe your system, I think in your case, uh, you could be an ideal automation solution, right? Because you can integrate directly with the customer ERP. So therefore, you almost you can almost skip yes. the, yeah. the the integration. Yeah, with there, your, are, there uh, are solutions WMS. that does integration uh, with right websites. In, yeah, yeah. But those are mostly small customers, right? So you can get orders from their website. Right. All small customers. A oh, bigger customer great. can have ERP. And okay. integration so, is a huge thing. Great. So yeah. I'm a I'm an e-commerce player. I go and hire a, a, a three PL player to do my shipping, and basically I say to them, you know what, just all my e-commerce orders will come to Cleverance as yeah, a yeah. software. Go and pick. As soon as they pick, the information goes back to my 
WooCommerce or Magento or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Awesome, yeah. awesome. But that means that means uh, the the Veras automation itself, which or the, which which comes to the benefit, which is accuracy, timely picking, data accuracy, all that, working with 3PL. Uh, your solution make it feasible for almost any size, right? I mean, right. no, no matter how big or small you are. Yes. You could right. be a, a, basically a small website. And the funny thing is yeah. that even the biggest companies, yeah. they sometimes struggle to implement real barcode scanning on their own facility. Yes. Right, right. But now, even small companies can do these things Sync. first because that's that is the place where you deal with your supply chain yeah. and then with your customer. So right. as long as you give good service right. from supply, you know what yeah. they brought you and right. then you don't ship uh, wrong products to your right. customers. Right. Right. You, give, you have benefits over right. the well-established old companies that's who cannot do that. Amazing. That's absolutely amazing. You know what? That's great actually. Right? I have, then I would recommend anybody who's watching this video or touching the product or selling the product, distributing the product, I would recommend you go and check Cleverance out and search out and I think you got partners in most of the countries, right? UAE, yes. Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, yeah, Germany, correct. India, wherever, right? Yes. That sounds uh, pretty good to me. So thank you very much thank for you, sharing your knowledge. You know, very inspirational approach. As I said to you guys, you know, in our things, I honestly, I know a lot of WMS provider, ERP players, and I have not seen something like this, right? So I would highly recommend for all of you to go and check uh, Clarence out. I think they have a contact page somewhere. Uh, talk to them, down see below. what they do <laughs> down below. And with this down below, I would request if you, you know, if you like what we're doing. Uh, on good news is we reached we reach 10,000 uh, subscribers. Thank to our friend here, who is uh, Hassan, who is uh, the background. We'll do a post with him as well. So again, share, uh, like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Serge again. I'll see you in the next video. So if you want to know more, just go for cleverance.com and find for yourself the software. And thank you to Seer. I hope you see you later. Maybe we'll discuss some other things. Definitely. We will definitely have Sergey one more time. Yes. Mm -hmm.